be glad that he has come. He said, I'm not come to call the righteous, and we were not righteous, and we're still not righteous. There's none righteous but him. He is the only righteous one. And so he said, I'm not come to call righteous people, but I am come to call sinners to repentance. Thank God for the mission of Jesus. And the mission continues. He came to call me. He came to die for me. He came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. And the Bible says the thief comes, but to do what? Steal and to do what? To kill and to do what? Destroy. But then Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. How many have life today? I got life in Jesus. I live spiritually. I got life. I have life eternal. I have life fully plenty. I live. I live to worship him. I am alive. The Bible says you shall not die but live. And so we are alive in Christ this morning. I'm glad to know him. I'm glad that the blood runs warm in my veins. I'm glad that I am a believer. I'm glad that I'm a son of God, a child of God, born again, filled with the spirit of God, sanctified on my way to glory. Every day I get up, I'm excited about him. Even if I don't feel well, I feel good in my soul. It is well with my soul. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm not just barely making it. I'm really living. I'm alive. Fully alive in Jesus. Might have a little bit of arthritis. Might have a little bit of headache. Might have a little bit of aches and pains. Might have the little high blood pressure and the little diabetes and whatever they diagnose. But I have life. I live in him. I live to worship him. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Men, we need to celebrate Jesus and the life of Jesus. He came to call rich people and poor people and white people and black people and brown people and high people and low people and educated people and uneducated people. He came to call Leroy to repentance and to life and I celebrate him today. Hallelujah. God bless you today. The church is a safe place. Jesus lives within us. The church is a place of love. We love people. We love everybody. Whether they are Republicans or Democrats or white or black, whether they're from America or from the islands or from Africa, we love everybody. This is a safe place because the Bible says God so loved the world. God so loved the cosmos. God is a cosmopolitan God. He said that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He traffics in life says I want you to live I want you to live good I want you to live high I want you to live well I want you to live abundantly I, I, I want you to live and live and live and live I, I want you to live until you die I want you to live not only now I want you to live tomorrow I want you to live and live out today and when today is done when tomorrow comes I want you to get up and live again Jesus Jesus is alive. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus is alive. Jesus lives. Hallelujah. Lives. Hallelujah. And we have the life of God in us. And when you get into that passage, uh, Luke chapter 19... And I'm going to say a little bit more than I take my seat. I mean, there was this man, Zacchaeus. And the Bible says that Jesus was passing through Jericho. Yes. And as he passed through Jericho, uh, there was a blind man by the wayside begging. And he heard, uh, hallelujah, that life was passing by. 
he was blind and people thought that he was dead. You know, sometimes when you have a disability, people want to write you off. Uh, well, people thought that he didn't have any right even to make up noise. But when he heard who it was that was passing by, the Bible says he caught on fire and he sat there, right there by the wayside of life begging, Jesus, thou son of David, when you're alive, you need to make some noise. Men make noise. Hallelujah. I'm not dead. When I'm dead, you're going to know when I'm dead. When I'm dead, they're going to wheel me in, in a casket and I'll be lying there lifeless and still. But until then, uh, until then, you lift your hands, you open your mouth, you walk in there, you take charge, you take authority. Until then. Until then. But now, but now, but now. And he cried out, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And there was a whole multitude. Oh, Lord. And it seemed like if he wasn't being heard, and he cried out more, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And still he wasn't being heard, and he made some more noise, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And they tried to shut him up. People are always trying to shut you up. Uh, uh, trying to tell you where you should be. You don't tell me where I'm supposed to be. I go where I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the same Jesus that has given you authority to be here has given me authority to be here. Just like how you have a right to be here, I have a right to be here. Ain't nobody running me from my church. I have a right to be here just like you. And this blind man, he made up some noise. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And they said, shh, shh, you're embarrassing us. Uh, why don't you just, 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 just stay calm? And he said, no, no. He said, because if I don't get healed today, if I don't make connection today, Today's my day. Today's my opportunity. You got to know when is your day and your opportunity. When God drops something in your spirit, you need to move on it. When God tells you to get up and go to the bank today, go to the bank today. Hallelujah. He has somebody waiting there to show you favor. You listen to the voice of God. And Bartimaeus has sat there. Hallelujah. And something inside of him, and I believe it was the Lord, say, cry out. Make some noise. Get his attention. Don't let this day pass by. Don't let him pass by. Because every step Jesus made was a step away from his miracle. And he heard the trump. And they were going by. And they were walking by. And they were walking away from him and the more they walked away from him is the more he did us the son of the hammers on me and the more they tried to shut him up is the more he made noise you don't let nobody shut you up hallelujah oh glory be to God oh glory be to God and the Bible says that it wasn't long Jesus heard huh. and as Jesus walked the Bible says Jesus stood he was walking and Jesus said call him and the same people who were trying to shut him up you don't take on the crowd you know the crowd is fickle the crowd just goes with the wind, whatever. The same people, <laughs> he's calling you, he's calling you. Same people who try to shut him up. <laughs> and when he got there, Jesus said, what, what do you want? It was a strange question. He was blind. You would think Jesus would know. But Jesus was right. Because some people are sick and they love being sick. Some people don't want to get better. They get used to being sick. 
and they just won't stay there. Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. You would think that this man would have gotten used to being blind by now. No, I want to see. I want to see like everybody else. I want to make it like everybody else. I want to have a house like everybody else. I want to have a car like everybody else. I want to get up and work like everybody else. Oh, Lord, I want to have health like everybody else. Oh, hallelujah. And as soon as he said it, Jesus said, receive thy sight. And immediately, he received his sight. <laughs> and he followed Jesus in the way. And Luke chapter 18 says in the last verse, and glorifying God. He followed, and as he followed, ah, 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 ye ke well, I know he wasn't speaking in tongues then, you know, because the Holy Ghost hadn't fallen. Uh, but I'm going to speak in tongues now. I'm so excited about Jesus. I'm, I'm so excited about Jesus. Men, you go back to your church excited about Jesus. You don't let nobody shut you up. Let them know you're here. I'm here. I'm in this church. You're not running me from this church. And the devil is trying to frighten us, you know. All kinds of diagnoses. Before you know it, they tell you you have cancer. And when you hear you got cancer, say, oh. Uh, I mean, and you just, you floored. And then they start telling us our prostate is going bad. <laughs> and that's another doozy. So, Gee. The devil trying to shut us out. No, and we say no. We say, as long as he lives, as long as he lives. How many know that he lives this morning? As long as he lives, 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 he lives, he lives, he lives, he lives, he lives. And immediately received the sight, and he followed Jesus, glorifying God. And all those who were trying to shut them up, they started glorifying God too. Don't let people shut you up. Huh. And when they try to shut you, you make more noise. And when you make more noise, when, when, when it catches, they're going to start glorifying God too. I don't mean to shut up until I die. Is that how you feel about it today? I don't mean to stop until I die. I already told my children, don't expect me to be no docile senior. <laughs> no. They give me trouble, I'm going to give them back trouble too. They talk back to me, I'm going to talk back to them. And even when I can't talk, give me a piece of paper. <laughs> You're not shutting me up. I couldn't get my daughter to shut up. So when I get old... No, no mm. I said, I'd rather live in a nursing home any day. No, sir. I said, I'm going to make my noise, say my peace. And when I'm dead, you're going to know, but until I'm dead. And that was bad of me. I see, made up some noise until a miracle took place. And while he was passing through Jericho, there was another man, a little short man by the name of Zacchaeus. And everybody hated Zacchaeus. And you say, I wonder why they hated him. They hated him because he was a publican. They hated him because he was a tax collector. We still don't like tax people. We can't stand the IRS. Why I can't stand them is because every little pay raise you get. Eh? Eh? And the rich people, they get by. They hardly pay anything. And they could afford to pay it. And I who can't afford to pay it. It makes you angry. And so I could understand why they couldn't stand Zacchaeus. And what made it worse was Zacchaeus wasn't a big man like, 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 like these men in the back there. <laughs> 
It's like it's like a short zoot. It's like a short man. And when you look at him, you really want to just tear him apart. <laughs> they couldn't stand him. They hated him. And maybe that's why he ran ahead. Because if they ever get hold of him, they want to they, they make sure he ain't see Jesus. Every time they see him come, they What's that case? I just use this. Look. <laughs> I don't have height, but I got this. You ain't gonna be big. You just gonna have some brains. And Zacchaeus outwitted all of them. And Zacchaeus ran ahead, and he got up in the tree, in the sycamore tree, and the Bible so he could see. G he heard. There's, there's, there's something about this Jesus, you know. Everybody is attracted to Jesus. Even now, they don't know what to do with Jesus. Even those who can't stand him want to see him. There's something about Jesus. Aren't you glad you know him? Hallelujah. And the crowd, the crowd couldn't stand Zacchaeus. And the Bible says that as Jesus passed by, Jesus is not prejudiced against rich people, you know. Jesus just only just just doesn't only love poor people, and I'm glad he loves poor people because then I'm included. But even rich people, he wants to save. And this was Zacchaeus, and he got there, and nobody could stand Zacchaeus. Everybody despised Zacchaeus because he was a tax collector, he was a public, and he was the chief. He was the chief among the publicans. And the Bible says that when Jesus came by, and Jesus came right under the tree. <laughs> and uh, Zacchaeus thought there's nobody knew that I'm up here in the tree but Jesus got there and Jesus looked up hallelujah Jesus saw him when nobody sees you in the crowd in the church Sometimes you feel forgotten when nobody, Jesus sees you. And Jesus came and he stood up and he said, Zacchaeus! <laughs> Zacchaeus thought he was doing it clandestinely and nobody said, Zacchaeus! Oh God, that must have been scary. Oh my, how, how, how does he know my name? Zacchaeus! Make haste! Come down today. Oh God. Today. Today. Uh, men, you're not here by accident. God arranged it for you to be here today. Today. Don't waste today. Today. Hurry up. Come down. Today, I must abide. I got to spend some time with you. Hallelujah. It's not just that we want to spend time with him, you know. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to spend time with you. He want, young man, he wants to spend time with you. And now is the time to cultivate, carve out some time to spend with him because he wants to spend time with Today, I must abide. I, I got to spend time with you today. <laughs> and as soon as he got in there, <laughs> Zaki said, I don't know what Jesus even said to him. As soon as he got in there, Zaki said, Lord, Behold, half my goods I give to the poor. Jesus is concerned about the poor. Those of us who have been blessed remember the poor. Men, some of us have been really blessed, you know, Terry. Some of us have been blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed. Don't forget the poor. As God blesses you, remember those who are less fortunate. Don't forget where you're coming from. Some of us come in from Jamaica, from Trinidad, St. Vincent, from Grenada, from Haiti. Don't forget where you're coming from. 
And then Zacchaeus said, and Lord, if I've taken anything from any man falsely, <laughs> he knew he was a little cheater. He, he knew he was a little bit of crook. He knew he was a little bit of mom's, a mobster. He knew, he, knew, he knew he had some gangster in him, short but gangster. <laughs> Lord, if, I, if I've taken anything from any man falsely. When you get saved, you make restitution. When you get saved, you fix it up. When you get saved, you treat your wife right. When you get saved, you treat your children right. You make it up. You make it up. You make amends. You fix it. You turn it back to how it should be. And he said, Lord, if I've taken anything, I give it back fourfold. And then Jesus said, today is salvation day for you. Today, salvation has come to your house. Because you're a son of Abraham. And then he said, because I am not come to call the righteous. You see, those of you who are so righteous and holy and sanctified and sanctimonious, Jesus said, I ain't got much to do with you. I'm come to call sinners. And that has to be the mindset of this church. Remember the sinners. Remember the crooked. Remember the vile. Remember the, remember the messed up. Remember those whose lies are not. Remember the homosexuals. Remember those who are battling sexually. Remember those who are having identity issues and crises. He says the church ought to be a safe place. Everybody ought to feel The prostitutes need to be able to come in here and find solace and safety. The transgendered people. You can't send them back to go get another sex change. Because uh -uh. I heard that's very painful. No, you can't send them back through that pain. You got to minister to them right where they're at, at their point of need. That's why we have a church. Church is not for, for us who have been cleaned up already. Yes, it is. But those of us who have been cleaned up, got to remember those who are still messed up. And we got to bring them, bring them in. And you got to lay your hands on their shoulders. And you got to embrace them. And say, this is where you belong. You have a home here. When all children mess up, what do you do? Fling them out? Kill them? Break their neck? Shoot them? No, you fix them up. You help them. And you wait until they come back, until they come back to their senses. Because all of them go crazy, you know. The teenagers, because we used to be crazy too, eh? I mean, some of you look here so sane and sanctified. And some of you, you, you know, suit and tie. We, we, we were messed up. Anybody was messed up here? I, I mean, I was messed up, messed up, messed up till my mother thought I was crazy, mental, gone. But God. But God. And because he fixed me, I can help fix them and let them know this is home. This is home. Huh. Retreat is home. You need to feel comfortable here. This is no holy, holy people and we so better than no. We are like Jesus. I'm come to call the sinners to repentance. Not just a sanctuary, a sanatorium, a safe place, a place to help people who are sick physically and mentally. God bless you today. God bless him. Just so glad to be here. Glad I'm glad Thank you. Thank you, Brother Herschel. Thank you.